Hi guys, and I'm so happy you're here with me today. Before we carry on with our discussion, please, in case you're just reading, I just want to let you know, please read the description. I'm gonna, it's going to appear on the screen right now. Uh, spend some time in reading it. A few seconds is not long because it's very, very important. So thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope you sorted out the environment around you, that it's safe and it's okay, so we can have this chat. Basically today, I hope you'll be quite short. I think you'll be quite short of the discussion because it's just like, I'll tell you what I want to tell you. <laughs> but basically the subject today is sexual education and how we as parents should uh, give our kids a healthy sexual education, especially as Christians, at least in our country, in Romania over the past few years, they've There've been all of all these laws trying to pass. I think in your countries probably they're already passed, like towards the West. But uh, laws that had to do with sexual education in schools. Um, there were a lot of petitions, especially from from Christians against these laws. There was a lot of pro and con why there should be sexual education in school, why there shouldn't be sexual education in school, and so on and so forth. N this is not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is our responsibility as parents to give our kids a healthy sexual education. I'll tell you an incident that happened recently and then I'll tell you a little bit about our journey in this area. Basically, I'm not talking as a parent who's been through all of this. I am, we are, Sam and I, facing all of this. So I'm just choosing to share from our own journey, basically. And maybe all of us walking along each other and try and be as successful as possible. But basically, a few weeks ago, I was at the football, um, how do you call it? A football training for Myla. Liam was with me. I had my laptop to work because many times when I go with them, I take my laptop and I edit a video or half a video or, you know, try and be useful with my time. It happened at this time, Myla was on the field obviously playing and Liam was with me he was coloring what's good and I'm happy about is that when Liam colors he tends to zoom out and I could see he was not aware of the incident I'm going to tell you about but basically as I was working on my laptop I was also listening to some children that were a bit on the side for me but just a few meters so I could hear them pretty well and I knew the kids Uh, they were from good families. They weren't like neglected kids or anything like that. And uh, I don't know if they were aware that I could hear them. I was working on my laptop. I can do more things than one at the same time. Uh, especially if I have to do like, I do something with my hands where I don't actually have to write things. And then with my ear, I can listen to something else. Uh, these kids, they were seven years old and they were talking about sex in a very detailed way. Uh, and not just about sex, about anything that had to do with sex, this area. You could see that they were kids because they were using uh, childish vocabulary. They didn't know how everything was called, but they didn't know the things around it. So they knew a lot of the details they shouldn't have known at that age, at least in my perspective and our perspective. And uh, then again... Uh, they were telling about all the the people and all the women, especially girls, they were following on TikTok and why they were following them on TikTok and what they were showing off in those videos on TikTok. So I just want to kind of make you aware if you let your child, especially small children, be on these types of platforms, be mindful, be careful. TikTok, but others as well I just know of TikTok I don't know of others but probably there's more there's a lot of uncensored unfiltered material popping up on your screen I have a TikTok account by the way I don't tend to spend time on it <laughs> I just kind of went on it to check recently to check some hashtags specifically from America about a machine I wanted to buy which by the way um I did buy and I am personalizing some things. So I'll leave you the, the link down below about to see my pages and see what I do. And uh, But now, closing the parenthesis, basically I do have TikTok. I don't spend time on TikTok just because I don't like how unfiltered it is. But 
on one of these instances, I mean, if I go on it, I just go to specifically look for these hashtags that have to do with what I'm interested in. But on this specific time, I remember I opened the app and the first video that popped up was with this girl uh, showing part of her body. And I was like, my instinct was to skip but I was like, let me see how far is it going. And I was surprised how erotic and how pornographic it was, although it was not porn in the real sense of the word, but it was very explicit. And I was like, whoa. And then hearing about those kids of seven years old that were allowed on TikTok, unfiltered, unlimited, basically, I was like, what in the world? So I just want to tell you, be careful. Even you as an adult, be careful with platform likes like TikTok. I know you can find good things on TikTok. I actually go on there to check for some good things. But just be careful because you can't really filter it too much. So just be mindful about it. That's all I want to say. So coming back from our discussions, well, the kids talking between themselves, I was shocked at a son, such young age. They knew so much and they were aware of so much sexual content so um now i'll go to our family we did talk to kids to our kids we wanted this area of sex and anything that had to do with it to be natural in our family we wanted them to feel comfortable to come and talk to mom and dad about it whatever questions they have we wanted to be the first ones that tell them about sex and everything that had to do with it. So actually, they were pretty young, I suppose, a few years back, probably two years back. It just happened in one discussion that one of the children, I think Milo, asked us how kids come into existence. And we saw it as a good opportunity to explain to them. So we explained to them very anatomically, very simple, not detailed at all. But we told them the truth. And they were very happy about it. They were very content about it. We told them that this is just the discussions we have in our family. It's not for them to go and tell to their friends or start discussions with their friends. This is just part of our family. It's just for us. They understood that very well because also when it comes to Father Christmas, we didn't tell our kids about Father Christmas, as in that Father Christmas exists. We told them that we give the presents. We explained to them we have a whole super nice tradition for Christmas maybe when it's Christmas time I'll film about it but they understood he was fine so now we did chat here and there about it when it was about periods for example one time they were very curious what pads were I gave them some they were like mom was that in the bathroom so I showed them we took one we opened it we put some water in it they saw they cut it with the scissors to see what's happening and they were very happy went over (laughs) you know just an information they were curious about and then passed on something else basically coming to this summer of 2022 uh, milo went to his first camp he was away for six days five nights without us and although it was a christian camp we we didn't rely on other parents and or other children's experiences we didn't know the baggage the kids would come with from school from home from friends we wanted milo to be ready we wanted milo to be prepared to face anything in this area that could come his way. So one day it just happened that uh, they were supposed to go to football just to play with Sam and Liam decided that he doesn't want or he got hurt, I can't remember, and he just ended up Sam and Milo. Mm, Sam took the opportunity and while they were playing, he talked a little bit with Milo. He said, no, now you're a little bit older and he basically told him a little bit about pornography, masturbation, the dangers, why we don't agree, why God said no, you know, what to do in case some other kids start a conversation or start showing him pictures or videos or, you know, anything that had to do with that. What can he do? What should he do? Especially if we're not around and basically tried our best to prepare him for instances that could come his way. Uh, For some people, I don't know if over where you live, but at least in Romania, probably this age seems very small, eight and a half. But actually, I mean, we decided to speak so late (laughs) about these issues because they didn't go to school. So this instance of the camp 
was the only time when they were away for more than a few hours without us and we wanted him to be ready just in case. Uh, he took the conversation very right. It was very natural. Maybe not the most comfortable discussions from a parent's perspective, but Sam was all right. He managed to be very natural. Milo received it okay. He was okay, dad. Sam told him it was just the discussions between them two not to go and tell his friends and not to go and tell Liam because Liam is not that old enough. He's still small, too small for that discussion. It was just like a discussion between men and Milo appreciated that. He loved it. He kind of saw himself. It gave him a bit of responsibility. He was like, okay, now I'm older. I'm, you know, just saw himself a bit of a big boy. And uh, yeah, basically, that's where we are at the moment. And basically, through this video, I just want to encourage you as a parent to prepare your child. Don't be scared to call things as they're called. Tell your child why is it right to do it, why is not all right. Uh, prepare your children for facing the world outside because we live in a very dirty and corrupt world. The world is not ashamed to expose anything that has to do with sex everywhere and as young as possible. So let's not be embarrassed to talk to our kids. Let's prepare our kids. We might not prepare them 100% or for every little instance they may face, but let's do our best to give them all the weapons we can give them in a metaphorical way, of course, to, to face the world outside. Let's prepare them to know what to do in situations like this. Let's prepare them not to be embarrassed to be different when all their friends probably or might be sleeping around for them to, to be able to stand vertical and not give in to temptation. For example, when I was at school, in high school, we had all sorts of, this, of discussions in, you, you know, in between with the colleagues and friends and stuff. Everybody knew that I believed in purity, in virginity. I wanted to be a virgin when I got married. Everybody knew. They kind of respected that. I could see that. But I was very free to speak to them and tell them why I believe what I believe and why I decided to keep myself pure for marriage. And uh, yeah, in a, in a way I was ready to, and I was not embarrassed to talk about this and why I was not embarrassed to be different, let's say. So let's prepare our kids to to do even better. I mean, I want my kids to do better than I did and be even more bold in in standing for the truth and, you know. But uh, let's prepare our kids. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the school tells them or doesn't tell them. We don't agree. I don't agree with the information and what they are teaching in schools. But children do need sexual education and the best person to give them a healthy sexual education is the parent unfortunately parents kind of pass this task to schools to sunday school teachers if it happened but sunday school teachers not so much maybe youth leaders whereas in is already a bit too late tell our children prepare them and also i mean i don't know if where you are but at least in my culture um it was very common and it is probably still very common in Christian circles, in churches, where sex is such a taboo and nobody talks about it, not even in a youth meeting or anything like that. All the children heard was sex is bad, sex is bad, you should keep away from it. And I, I suppose especially girls in these areas, then for 20 years they hear sex is bad, sex is bad, and then they get married and all of a sudden sex is good, but they can't get over all these 20 years of hearing it that is bad and accept it that is good now in the context of marriage. So let's not just tell them it's bad. But sex is not bad. Sex is good. Sex was created by God. The problem is that the devil corrupted it. And what we see today exposed all over and all around us in films and everywhere in society is the corruption of what God created. So let's tell our kids the complete truth. Let's tell them why pornography is not good not just that it's bad let's tell them about the addiction it creates which is as strong as drugs let's tell them that marriage does not take the addiction of pornography away but if you have this problem before you get married and you don't sort it out you bring it with you into marriage let's tell them why having sexual relationships before marriage is not all right and or outside of marriage after you get married 
uh, let's not normally when it comes to sexual education the negative sides they hear is just unplanned pregnancies and sexually transmitted disease which are realities we have to talk about them but it's not just that the implications are much deeper than just these two it goes into every area of their lives and of their future marriages so let's speak naturally let's prepare them let's give them an image that is as complete as we can obviously age appropriate you talk to your kids in an age appropriate way like with our kids some didn't give my details and no just explain what it is why it's not okay what god believes about it what we believe about just what god believes about and uh, what to do in case he's faced with situations where he's exposed to it so let's prepare our children let's not be naive that our children will not be faced with it because the world is very dirty and the world we live in is very corrupt and it's just going to get worse so let's prepare them and have in mind not just today not just to raise them until they're 18 and they leave the house let's prepare them with having a, a future mental picture in our minds i always think of mal and liam i don't don't just think i want them to be adults when i raise them many times i think these guys will i want them to be vertical men in society that stands for what's right i want them to i'm actually raising to future husbands i'm raising hopefully to future fathers so i'm not just thinking of today and now and just school and they need to learn how to write it's very important all of this but i also try and have i don't always get it right but i always try to have in mind the future picture the the people they'll become one day and it starts from now we build now we we started building when they were born to prepare them and at least to give our best in raising them as great men of god or you if you have a girl to raise your your daughters as great women of god so be blessed Thank you for watching until the end. Maybe you have other tips and tricks. I'll be more than happy to receive them. Um, we are searching, studying, getting educated, learning what's the best way to prepare our children in that area. But yeah, thank you for watching. And let's, let's raise men and women that will stand up for what is right, even if they stand alone. See you next time and thank you for watching. Bye!